Yesterday, healthcare organizations, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical Association, and the Children's Hospital Association, sent a letter requesting the Department of Justice investigate and prosecute those who question radical gender surgeries for minor children. Now, unlike the attacks on pregnancy resource centers, there has not been any documented cases of violence against these hospitals. Now, this is the playbook we saw from the left when parents speaking out at school board meetings were labeled domestic terrorists. The left has increasingly pushed to weaponize federal agencies under this administration to use them against their enemies. Joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Dan Bishop. He's a member of the House Judiciary Committee and the House Homeland Security Committee. He represents North Carolina's 9th Congressional District. Congressman Bishop, welcome back to the program. Tony, I'm glad to be with you again. So is this deja vu? I mean, are we seeing once again a left-leaning organization calling on this administration to use the government against those they disagree with? Uh, undoubtedly, we are. That seems to be the left's modus operandi. But, Tony, I think you, your viewers ought to recognize that it may be worse. That is to say, in the previous instance of the moms and dads going to school boards being targeted across the country by the FBI at the instruction of Merrick Garland, that all began in the White House. It didn't come from the National Association of School Boards. The White House used that organization as a cutout to, to, draw, to uh, sort of scheme up this attack on a group that the White House, a disfavored political group from the position of the White House. And I wouldn't, I mean, we don't know any evidence yet to understand that the AMA and, uh, and the uh, pediatric uh, uh, organization are doing the same thing, but they well might be. And in any event, my gosh, where have we become, where have we come to in this country when constitutional rights mean so little to the left, the tolerant left, that they, uh, they want to see at political opponents jailed any time they disagree, particularly on issues that are fringe issues. I mean, when has it been that we can in this country have a position on the ideology of transgenderism and the and the destruction of children by means of it, the surg surgeries for kids who won't have an opportunity to, to express adult consent? It's, it's horrific. Yeah, to be clear, we oppose violence of any type. And if so, if someone were to, you know, firebomb one of these hospitals because they disagree with what those hospitals are doing, that person should be arrested and charged with that crime. But we've not seen any evidence to suggest that that's happening. On the other hand, though, we've had nearly 100 cases of violence against care pregnancy centers since the month of May and the leaking of the Dobbs decision. But yet we've seen no arrest from the Biden Department of Justice on this clear, clear act, these clear acts of violence, and we've not even heard them say anything or give an update. So what are we left to believe? And Tony, that summons to mind the arrest, the, the raid on the home of Mark Houck by 20 or 30 FBI agents, his arrest in front of his children, guns drawn, uh, for a violation of the FACE Act, the act concerning clinic entrances. He had allegedly pushed somebody on two occasions. On one occasion, the person had fallen down and been injured. So he's facing 11 years under an indictment by the Justice Department, and they send in the FBI in that kind of raid. And yet we've seen all of those attacks on pregnancy resource centers. They also are covered by that same uh, federal law. Right. And where, right. Is, where is the response to that? Uh, none at all. So you know, Americans are having this deepening sense. Well, it's more than a sense. They have this conviction that there's a dual standard of justice, and they've never seen, I've never seen in my lifetime, a Justice Department and FBI, federal resources, politicized in the way that we're seeing. And, and so, Tony, that's our job. If Republicans are fortunate enough to win a majority, I sit on the Judiciary Committee we'll, where Jim Jordan is a ranking member and will be chairman. And I think what we need is what something like what they did in the 1970s, the church committee that, uh, that look, took a hard, long look at our intel agencies. Frankly, even then, the FBI was the one they had the hardest time penetrating. So let me ask you about that, because I know we, we could go on all day talking about the problems, but I think people want to hear the solutions. I mean, I do. So 
under a Republican majority in the House, even though they would not have the executive branch, which the, the Department of Justice comes under, they would have the purse strings, and therefore they also have subpoena power. You could investigate and produce a report that would show the deficiencies and the problems and how there has emerged a two-track system of justice in this country. Could you not? I think we could. And and that is, you know, that was the struggle, frankly, that uh, the church committee faced in the 70s. I just finished reading an extensive review, a book about the process and the intel state, the security state, the intel agencies, the FBI, the CIA, you know, were enormously obstructive to that interaction. And they are concerned justifiably, frankly, about sources and methods. But then they can also use those same uh, protections in, in a manipulative way to avoid Congress finding out what's going on. But we need to get into the into the confrontation, dig into it carefully, look at how the FBI is uh, is taking is setting priorities, the, the Department of Justice, how are they pursuing cases like the Whitmer supposed well kidnapping plot in Michigan where two two of the accused were acquitted on entrapment grounds. How are they uh, how do they decide to go arrest Mark Howe? How do they decide to send in a team, a SWAT team, on that mission rather than just asking someone to surrender himself or herself? Are they engaged in purposeful intimidation of, a, of political opponents in doing so? It's a subtle thing, but we have to do that. And I believe, frankly, Jim Jordan's leadership will, will take us in exactly that direction. I think there's no question, Dan, that that has to happen because if, it's, if it doesn't happen, I do not think the Americans— whether conservative or liberal, will ultimately be able to have confidence in our system of justice. Well, and and there begins, if that is the case, Tony, there begins, you know, an almost in, unremediable destruction of the country. We have to restore justice. The American rule of law, Democrats talk about it a lot, or the left talks about it a lot. Uh, they say that there's these threats to our democracy, but this is, you're seeing the, the threats to democracy and to the rule of law lived out in a justice yeah. department that appears to move according to politics rather right. than impartial justice. Yeah, and that's, that's, that is disturbing because that is the very bedrock of our system. Our republic rests on the rule of law. Congressman Dan Bishop, always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Tony.